a very good evening to everyone uh, i will be talking on the role of temperature strain rate and pre existing linear anisotropy on the evolution of stretching lineation in the eastern ghats province india so whenever we use the term stretching lineation the uh, first thing that comes to most people's mind is a uh, ductile shear zone that constitute these basic elements the uh, myelonitic foliation that represents the xy plane of the strain ellipsoid the direction of maximum shortening that represents the z direction of the strain ellipsoid and the x direction of the strain ellipsoid which uh, represents the direction of maximum elongation or the finite extension direction in predominantly simple shear zones determination of the kinematic x direction is especially important as it approximates the transport direction especially in domains where uh, the uh, myelonitic foliation uh, curves almost into parallelism with the shear plane significance of this uh, ductile shear zone becomes even more important in case of deep crustal granulite facies rocks exposed along ancient orogenic belts which are susceptible to reworking and reactivation along later shear zones that play an important role in fluid infiltration frequently and also in exhumation very often exhumation of this uh, deep crustal granulites very often <clears throat> therefore it is important to study the structural and metamorphic imprints of these late shear zones and while dealing with the structural uh, characterization of these shear zones the first and foremost thing that needs to be done or is done in most cases is uh, to understand and determine the kinematics or more specifically the kinematic x direction of these late shear zones using the orientation of the macroscopic stretching lineation on the myelonitic foliation surface so in this study we uh, document and characterize the evolution of stretching lineations from one such granulite facies terrain the eastern ghats province and this work is based on the northern part of the eastern ghats province where the specific study area is represented by this orange uh, rectangle within which this red line is an intra province shear zone which is known as the mahanadi shear zone now why are we uh, studying lineations from this particular shear zone <clears throat> south of the uh, mahanadi shear zone or the msz there is a prominent swing in the trend of lineaments from uh, north northeast south south southwest through east west to west northwest east southeast in the vicinity of the msz and to its north and a close look at this zone of transposition and reorientation reveals a prominent regional scale dextral curvature in the geometries of the lineaments and the msz or the mahanadi shear zone also happens to be a predominant dextral strike slip shear zone this is the geological map of the area showing the major lithologies and the planar and the linear structural fabrics Uh, the earliest planar fabrics uh, are S1 and S2, which together forms a composite foliation. And the S1 is to composite foliation uh, gets transposed and reoriented into an east-west to west-northwest, east-southeast uh, striking orientation in the vicinity of the regionally penetrative D3 shear zone and also within the shear zone. The regionally penetrative d3 shear zone is represented by this red boundaries and and red labelings and as is evident from this map this d3 shear zone involves a minor sinistral component of shearing in plan and a predominant normal asymmetry in vertical section following this d3 shearing event predominant dextral strike slip shearing occurred along the uh, msz and it was localized mainly along the msz where prominent dextral asymmetry was observed in plan thus as is evident from this map the uh, d4 shear zone or uh, dextral shearing along the d4 shear zone nucleated within the regionally penetrative d3 normal shear zone <clears throat> on field the 
earliest Nisic segregation S1 defined by alternate garnet sillimanite rich and quartzo feldspathic layers underwent isoclinal folding to form an axial planar foliation S2 and this together formed the S1 S2 composite foliation that uh, was transposed and reoriented into a northerly dipping orientation in the vicinity of the D3 shear zone and wherever earlier uh, open warps are present on the S1 S2 foliation surface superposition of the D3 related warps led to the development of type 1 or dome basin interference patterns. Now, within the D3 shear zone, where a prominent normal asymmetry is consistently observed in vertical section, simultaneous operation of grain boundary migration mechanism in quartz and bulging recrystallization uh, uh, mechanism in K feldspar constrains the temperature of deformation during this D3 normal shearing to uh, 550 to 600 degrees Celsius or uh, middle to lower amphibolite facies conditions. That is uh, conformable with the operation of rhomb A slip in quartz and this uh, pr prominent asymmetry in the CPO pattern of quartz is correlatable with <coughs> uh, this normal shear sense as observed in the field and also uh, exhibited by this Kefeldspar domains in the high D3 strain zones where in sections parallel to this down deep stretching L3 lineation that is in vertical exit section, both quartz and form quartz and feldspar forms ribbons along with a sillimanite defined mineral lineation. Now, based on uh, detailed outcrop maps from suitable outcrops, regional maps, uh, macro scale field observations, microstructural studies, and EBSD analysis, including the construction of misorientation profile along with CPO studies and geochronological data, it was <coughs> inferred that uh, this regional scale dextral curvature in lineament pattern was due to the transposition of the S1 S2 composite foliation uh, during normal shearing during the D3 shearing event, which did not involve any actual dextral component uh, did not involve any actual component of uh, dextral strike slip shearing and this uh, regional scale transposition of fabrics and lineaments in the northern eastern Ghats <coughs> uh, province occurred during 730 to 680 MA and was succeeded by uh, localized dextral shearing along the MSZ at uh, 520 to 510 MA uh, and Nucleation of the dextral strike slip uh, shear zone or the D4 shear zone within the regionally penetrative D3 normal shear zone is also evidenced by this fine grained S4 myelonetic uh, fabric cross cutting the uh, penetrative coarser grained uh, quartz and feldspar ribbons that define the uh, S3 foliation in the high D3 strain zones. Now, within the MSZ where S4 is the penetrative uh, structural fabric or the penetrative planar fabric, there is a prominent dextral asymmetry exhibited by this class in plan, which is conformable with this uh, sub-horizontal L4 uh, stretching lineation. Now, within the D4 shear zone, quartz underwent recrystallization by bulging mechanism. <clears throat> And in sub-horizontal exit sections, a sillimanite defined mineral lineation along with quartz ribbons have been observed. Now, bulging recrystallization mechanism in quartz along with uh, lack of significant plastic deformation of feldspar and uh, um, activation of predominant rhomb A slip mechanism in quartz with a, a prominent dextral asymmetry of the CPO pattern in sub-horizontal exit sections reveals that the D4 shearing operated at temperatures around 400 degrees Celsius or in the middle green schist facies conditions. Now, while uh, evaluating the structural evolution of the area, special, emph special emphasis was laid on the lineations in the D3 and the D4 shear zones as these two shear zones has uh, got an important role to play in the structural evolution of the area and <clears throat> This was based on three primary aspects, that is characterization of lineations, uh, which involved identifying and uh, 
uh, distinguishing intersections, stretching mineral lineations, that is the uh, linear fabrics which are uh, commonly observed in a shear zone, preservation of stretching lineation, that is the factors which control the preservation of stretching lineation on the myelonitic foliation surface and the evolution of stretching lineation in late shear zones. Now these three aspects form the main uh, form the focus of this discussion and will be taken up one after the other. So the first one is the characterization of lineations. A slight repetition of the old story where the S1, S2 composite foliation has been transposed and reoriented into a northerly dipping orientation in the vicinity of the D3 shear zone and within the D3 shear zone or more specifically in the low to moderate D3 strain zones, the S1, S2 composite foliation carves into parallelism with S3 with an associated normal asymmetry and intersection of S1, S2 with the S3 foliation forms the delta 3 intersection lineation on the surface of the S3 foliation. Now all throughout this area a prominent normal asymmetry has been observed in vertical section or in subvertical section. With increasing strain the delta 3 intersection lineation changes its orientation and becomes uh, down the deep of the S3 foliation in zones of high D3 strain and this orientation of the delta 3 intersection lineations is conformable with the orientation of the L3 stretching lineation in zones of high D3 strain and in subvertical exit sections parallel to this uh, L3 stretching lineation both quartz and feldspar forms monomineralic ribbons with aspect ratios uh, significantly higher in this uh, sub in, in this subvertical exit sections than in sections perpendicular to this uh, down deep stretching lineation or in the sub horizontal yz sections <clears throat> on the other hand in the low to moderate d3 strain zones aspect ratio of quartz along this uh, in sections oriented along this uh, delta 3 intersection lineation is significantly lower than in sections oriented parallel to this down deep direction on the S3 foliation surface. Now this uh, higher aspect ratio of quartz along this uh, down deep direction uh, then in sections oriented parallel to this delta 3 lineation clearly indicates that this delta 3 lineation was not the stretching lineation in the moderate D3 strain zones and this lineation has got nothing to do with the kinematics of the D3 shearing event. Rather, it's just an intersection lineation of the formed by the uh, intersection of the S3 foliation with the earlier planar fabrics. Now, uh, from the moderate to the uh, high D3 strain zones, there is an <coughs> increase in the there, there is uh, a transition in uh, the slip system of slip systems activated in quartz from prism A through rhomb A to basal A uh, slip and this might be due to an increasing strain rate from the moderate to the high D3 strain zones. Also in the moderate D3 strain zones, silimonites are oriented ran randomly as also reflected in this uh, from this ran from this near random distribution of the crystallographic axis of silimonites in this petrofabric diagrams and in the high D3 strain zones a silimonite defined mineral lineation uh, is observed and this is conformable with this uh, strong clustering of the silimonite C axis on the kinematic X. Therefore a down deep stretching lineation is not preserved on each and every exposed S3 foliation surface in the regionally penetrative normal D3 shear zone. Rather, the macroscopic lineation that is preserved in these zones is the delta 3 lineation formed by the intersection of the S3 foliation with the earlier planar fabrics wherever preserved and a silimonite defined mineral lineation um, only develops in the high D3 and the high D4 strain zone. Now, lack of preservation of uh, con lack of consistent preservation of a down deep stretching lineation uh, on each and every exposed S3 foliation surface in the normal D3 shear zone brings us to the next topic, that is the conditions that control the preservation of stretching lineation on the myelonitic foliation. 
<clears throat> again we go back to the low to moderate d3 strain zones where aspect ratio of quads is considerably higher in sections parallel to this delta 3 intersection lineation than in sections oriented down the deep of the s3 foliation nevertheless aspect ratio of quads along this direction aspect ratio of feldspar along uh, this direction is more or less similar uh, to the aspect ratio of feldspar along the down deep direction now similar aspect ratios uh, along uh, <clears throat> uh, two directions that are oriented at considerably high angles to each other implies that the feldspar grains were near equant and uh, in these zones and uh, this suggests that the feldspar did not take up significant uh, strain in the more in the low to moderate d3 strain zones nevertheless the plastic deformation of feldspar is reflected uh, by this thin mantle of recrystallized feldspar grains occurring along the boundaries of feldspar <clears throat> therefore in these zones uh, the bulk strain is taken up by quartz which forms uh, ribbons and these ribbons warps warps and anastomoses around the feldspathic domains forming high amplitude warps uh, or defining high amplitude warps and uh, this clearly reflects a contrast in competency between these two minerals at these temperatures at which this d3 shearing operated now this is indeed the case that is a competency contrast exists between <clears throat> feldspar and quartz at temperatures in between 550 to 600 degrees celsius that is the temperatures at which d3 shearing operated <clears throat> the important thing is to be that is to be noted here is that despite the higher aspect ratio of quartz in sections parallel to this down deep direction no macroscopic stretching lineation is observed on the foliation surface on the other hand, in the high D3 strain zones, a prominent down deep stretching lineation is observed on the S3 foliation surface and in sections parallel to this L3, uh, down deep L3 lineation that is in subvertical exit section, as also mentioned earlier, both quartz and feldspar forms ribbons, that is, both these minerals accommodate the bulk strain and quartz define very low or almost uh, zero amplitude warps around the feldspathic domains unlike the high amplitude warps observed in the moderate d3 strain zones nevertheless the higher competency of feldspar than quartz at this temperature conditions is reflected by the pinching out of the feldspathic domains within the adjacent quartz rich domains so uh, this is to compare the situation in the high D3 strain zone and in the low to moderate D3 strain zone. In the high D3 strain zone, where a prominent stretching lineation is preserved on the foliation surface, both quartz and feldspar accommodate the strain and quartz define uh, low or almost no amplitude warps around the uh, feldspathic domains, which is uh, not the case in the low to moderate D3 strain zones, where a prominent macroscopic a down deep stretching lineation is not observed on the foliation surface and this quartz ribbons accommodate the bulk strain and uh, define uh, high amplitude warps around the more competent near equant feldspathic domains another feature that is observed <clears throat> in the low to moderate d3 st strain zones is the formation of disconnected quartz ribbons in uh, domains that are uh, in, or in micro domains with a considerably high proportion of feldspar now to summarize the situation uh, these two schematic diagrams have been used where as the quartz warps around the near equant felds, uh, feldspathic domains whenever these uh, feldspars are exposed on the uh, foliation surface we cannot expect a stretching lineation on this surface as these feldspars are near equant in nature on the other hand a quartz defined stretching lineation is only observed on the S3 foliation surface when this quartz ribbon is exposed along the foliation surface for a significant length. <clears throat> Apart from this, occurrence of this uh, disconnected quartz within the feldspar dominated micro domains prevents 
pronoun pronounced elongation of this quartz and uh, if a myelinity and if a foliation surface is exposed along uh, this micro domain then most likely it is it will be difficult to see a quartz defined stretching lineation on the other hand in the high d3 strain zones both quartz and feldsparts are elongated and on each and every exposed foliation surface we see either a feldspar defined or a quartz defined stretching lineation for this reason a consistent down deep stretching lineation is observed on almost each and every exposed s3 foliation surface in the high d3 strain zone now uh, <clears throat> decrease in amplitude of this warps defined by quartz from the moderate to the high d3 strain zones reveals an apparent an apparent reduction in uh, the competency contrast between these two minerals that is feldspar and quartz from the moderate to the high d3 strain zones and this situation that is this apparent reduction in competency contrast between feldspar and quartz occurs at high strain rates which implies that the d that the high d3 strain zones deformed at higher rates than the moderate d3 strain zones and higher strain rates in the high d3 strain zones is reflected by a higher proportion of recrystallized grains of both feldspar and quartz than that in the moderate d3 strain zones the implication is that at high strain rates polymerally rocks tend to preserve a stretching lineation on the foliation surface but this is not the entire story <clears throat> in case of uh, uh, the in the in case of the d4 ortho and the ultra myelonites where a prominent l4 sub horizontal l4 stretching lineation is preserved on the myelonitic surface in the high d4 strain zones as reflected by the photographs not everywhere on the foliation surface do we get to see a, a prominent uh, stretching lineation rather in parts of the foliation surface we see a stretching lineation now this is due to the fact that uh, at at the deformation temperatures uh, of at which d4 dextral shearing operated that is at around 400 degrees celsius feldspar do not undergo significant plastic uh, deformation whereas quartz undergoes plastic deformation with relatively more ease and wherever uh, feldspars are present the quartz ribbons warp around these feldspathic uh, domains and when these feldspars are exposed along the foliation surface we do not get to see a foliation whereas when quartz ribbons like this that is continuous quartz ribbons like this are exposed along the foliation surface we do see a stretching lineation now this is the situation irrespective of the strain rate and therefore at high strain rates polymerally rocks tend to preserve a stretching lineation each, on each and every part of the myelonitic foliation provided the minerals with the highest modal proportion undergo plastic deformation at the concerned deformation temperature now the final part where we deal with the evolution of stretching lineations in late shear zone or the d4 shear zone in this study now in the low d4 shear zone or in the d4 protomyelonites the macroscopic foliation is the S3 foliation on the surface of which a near down deep L3 stretching lineation is preserved. <clears throat> now in sections uh, perpendicular to this L3 stretching lineation, prominent dextral asymmetry is observed. Uh, and in sections parallel to this uh, near down deep L3 stretching lineation, aspect ratio of quartz is considerably higher than uh, that in sections at right angles to this lineation so the situation is something like this that irrespective of a dextral asymmetry in plan or in sub horizontal section a near down deep l3 stretching lineation is preserved in the d4 protomyelonites despite d4 being a predominantly dextral strike slip event this is however not the case in the uh, D4 ortho and the ultra myelonites, where a prominent sub horizontal L4 stretching lineation is preserved on the S4 myelonitic foliation uh, surface, and aspect ratio of quartz is higher in sub horizontal sections parallel to this L4 lineation uh, than in sections at right angles to this lineation. However, from the ortho myelonites to the ultra myelonites, uh, the difference in aspect ratios of the quartz ribbons between the sub horizontal sections parallel to L4 and the sub vertical sections perpendicular to L4 becomes more pronounced. Now, going back to 
the D4 protomyelonites, the preservation of the L, near down deep L3 stretching lineation on the uh, myelonitic foliation uh, can be explained by the nucleation of the D4 shear zone within the regionally penetrative D3 shear zone. Now, this is further evidenced by uh, <clears throat> the occurrence of low wavelength bulges on high wavelength sutures along the quartz grain boundaries in the protomyelonites. Now, these high wavelength sutures are results of grain boundary migration uh, that operated during the D3 shearing event on which this low wavelength bulges were imprinted during the D4 shearing event and this low wavelength bulges uh, formed due to bulging recrystallization became even more penetrative in the uh, D4 ortho and uh, ultramyelonites. Therefore, to explain the uh, preservation of this down deep L3 lineation in the D4 protomyelonites, this uh, series of schematic diagrams have been utilized where uh, the first case is the uh, preservation of a stretched schematic crystal uh, stretched along the down deep direction due to a predominant down deep X3 stretch during the D3 shearing event. Now, this is a situation prior to the beginning of the D4 dextral shearing event. With the onset of D4 dextral uh, shearing, a sub-horizontal stretch or, uh, begin, or X4 begins to operate on this already stretched schematic crystal and this slightly reduces the aspect ratio of this crystal although it is still uh, elongated along the down deep direction due to a remnant uh, down deep stretch x3 due to d3 now this is the case in the d4 protomyelonite where despite a prominent uh, dextral shear sense indicators in plan uh, down deep l3 lineation is preserved on the macroscopic s3 foliation with further increments of the sub-horizontal uh, stretch that is x4 the aspect ratio of the schematic crystal decreases and it has a tendency to uh, become reoriented towards the sub-horizontal uh, x4 uh, direction that is the ongoing stretch and a situation is reached where uh, the sub-horizontal stretch x4 and the remnant down deep stretch are nearly the same and uh, we can speculate that in this case no stretching lineation will be observed on the foliation surface however such a stage is not observed in the field although the validity of this stage is approved by the following stage where uh, the sub horizontal stretch x4 exceeds the uh, remnant down deep stretch slightly and this is reflected by a slight increase in or a slight elongation of the schematic crystal towards the sub-horizontal direction. Now, this is the case in the D4 orthomyelonite where aspect ratio of quartz is slightly higher in uh, the sub-horizontal direction than in the sub-vertical direction. <coughs> With further increments in the sub-horizontal stretch, the X4 uh, becomes sufficiently higher than X3 and this leads to the formation of a well-developed prominent stretching lineation on the surface of the S4 myelonitic foliation in the D4 ultra myelonite. Therefore, in multiply deformed terrains, kinematics of simple shear zones may get complicated due to the interaction between the pre existing strain ellipsoid and the strain ellipsoid of the ongoing shearing event, and uh, thus the x direction should be interpreted on the basis of the stretching lineation in the highest possible strain zone where the resultant stretch will be will most likely be in the direction of the x direction of the concerned shear. So this study re-emphasizes the importance of characterizing lineations in multiply deformed terrains before interpreting the kinematic x direction and whether stretching lineation will be preserved on the myelonitic foliation surface in, poly in deformed polyminerallic lithologies depends at least on these two factors that is temperature and strain rate and evolution of stretching lineation in late shear zone depends on the interaction between the pre-existing and the ongoing strain ellipsoid. So to conclude, in case of polyminerallic polymineral lithologies deformed along a ductile shear zone, 
The kinematic x direction can be best determined from domains that have been subjected to the highest strain at the highest rate. Thank you. I actually, this is a part of my PhD work, which I carried out under the supervision of Professor Saival Gupta in the Department of Geology and Geophysics, IIT Kharagpur. I express my heartiest gratitude to Professor Santanu Ghosh and uh, Dr. Pratish P and all the other members of the SGT SGI uh, for allowing me to deliver this talk. I deeply acknowledge my supervisor, Professor Saival Gupta, for his thorough supervision and continuous support during this work. I am grateful to the X and the present HODs of the Department of Geology and Geophysics, IIT Kharagpur, for extending departmental facilities. And I also acknowledge Dr. Amol Sawant and uh, Shuangar Samantare, Arijit Das, Swaraj Banerjee, and Shuashis Devnath for their valuable support during the field trips.